Bonjour, I'm your host Julie Michel and welcome to your new wine video. These are my top 10 tips of things not to do when you are going out for tasting wine. That's if you want to enjoy your wine properly or let's say a little bit better and enjoy the experience with others as well, which is very important, isn't it? So maybe that's when you are going out to a wine tasting event in a restaurant or anywhere else really, or perhaps if you're going at a winery cellar door. Let's go. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest, highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated cost. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. Now this may be obvious, but way too many people still forget about it way too often. Wearing strong perfume or cologne will affect your own perception of a wine while you're tasting and even more importantly it will affect other people's perception of the wine. Think about other people as well. There's nothing worse and I'm sure you may have had this experience before than tasting wine next to someone who strongly smells like perfume. That's because most fragrances have some fruity, floral, sometimes animal characters that resemble the ones that you find in your wine. So it will interfere with the way your perception of your wine's aroma. Now aftershave will probably be okay for others because it's not too strong but it will affect your own perception of the wine because it's in close proximity to your nose and your taste bud. So if you put strong perfume or aftershave don't be surprised if the wine you bought at the winery cellar door tastes completely different once you bring it back home. So here nothing too dramatic will happen if you hold your glass of wine by the bowl this way. But you won't really look very, say, educated about wine. If you do, you will look like nothing, like a wine connoisseur at all. This is kind of how you want to hold your glass if you want to look like you know about it a little bit. Additionally, if you hold your glass by the bowl this way, this will quickly warm up your wine and affect the serving temperature that would normally have been carefully set for the wine, the particular wine you're having to be enjoyable. Warm wine is never very, very good. So white shirts look great. Some say they even make you look a little thinner than you really are. Others might even use yours as the perfect background to assess the genuine color of their wine. Perfect, perfect white background. But beware of too vigorous a swirl, especially with red wine, and beware of this guy next to you that's been having one or two glasses too many. Sure, late morning around 11 a.m. when you start to be really, really hungry is actually one of the best moments during the day to taste wine. In fact, that's often when we wine professionals, wine judges at wine competitions and such taste wine because that's the moment when your taste buds are the most acute and the most awake and that's when you taste wine the best. But if you are too hungry, the effects of alcohol may, af may affect your senses a little bit too much, say for civilized tasting. I've also noticed that 
when you're too hungry you're more inclined to swallow a little bit more wine which is not ideal in those circumstances now if you are too full your taste buds will be too sleepy for really an enjoyable experience and you won't appreciate your wine which is always a bit of a pity so a light meal or a light snack is what you want to have prior to going tasting So preferably no coffee just before tasting and I'm afraid nothing too sweet either. I know this is getting a little bit demanding but the strong flavors of those may saturate your taste buds with those strong flavors and again you know affect the perception your perception of your wine. Now as for what to have during the tasting which is a bit of a common question there is an old saying in the UK wine trade you know the people buying and trading wine in the UK as they've been doing for centuries and centuries buy wine on apples and sell it on cheese meaning certain foods will make your wine taste terrible like apples regardless of the type of wine while others will make virtually any wine taste delicious that's going to be the case with like cheese and fine charcuterie. So favor neutral bread or neutral crackers or grossini, you know, these Italian bread sticks, which are the type of foods that you may have noticed are exactly what are served at wineries cellar doors. And that's exactly why. So now the tasting starts and you're being poured a nice glass of wine. It pays off to pay a little attention to the explanations on what you are being poured. So you can pick up information around the context of what you are going to be tasting, like the vineyard, the intention of the winemaker that's been put into this particular wine, has it been aged in oak barrels and you know, things like that. Important things to assess the quality of the wine. This will help you understand better the wine that you are about to taste and perceive more subtle nuances inside your glass. <clears throat> of course remembering what you've tasted will help you as well when time comes to pick up a few bottles for bringing back home. Have you had this experience when you're starting to smell and taste and enjoy your wine and your neighbor starts describing everything about it the coffee the chocolate the blackberries the blackberry pudding you name them or he or she starts criticizing everything about the wine it is impossible to assess wine a wine and process someone's opinion at the same time well at least i can't do it i'm not a very good multitasker i have to admit but most people can't either so just idly let everyone taste quietly first and then share your opinion even if you don't like the wine respect everyone's time for assessing and appreciating this fine beverage that is wine we all have very different tastes and preferences when it comes to wine but you have to respect everyone else's as well That's it, I do believe that everyone should be able and confident enough to speak out an opinion eventually. No one's right or wrong about how much he or she enjoys and likes a wine or not. Also I find that sharing thoughts about a wine with other people is the best way to go deeper into your appreciation and your understanding of the nuances within the wine, comparing what you're perceiving with what other people like or dislike about the wine. For example, if you love a wine but talking with everyone else around the room and you realize no one likes this wine and some actually dislikes it very much, well, it could may well be an indication that this is not going to be the wine that you want to serve at your next dinner party and or at your daughter's wedding. On the same note, I find that asking questions to those who really know and care about a wine like the winemaker or the staff at the cellar door is a great way and the only way really to go deeper into your understanding of where its unique signature individual taste comes from. No one, and I can tell you that no one really tastes well all the nuances within a wine, even the top best experts, without having some ideas of its context of production, where it comes from or how it was made. 
In fact, wine geeks like me and wine professionals are those who ask the most questions when we go and visit wineries. And that's for a reason. Think of it this way, and I often love to have a look at it this way. For example, if you're looking at a painting at the museum or hearing a piece of music or a song, it just helps immensely if you know the story of the artist behind it. Otherwise, you're just very likely to miss the whole point of the artwork or the intention behind the artwork. Same goes for wine. So our first impression on a wine is helpful. And I'd go as far as saying that it's often accurate because we approach and we perceive things with a bit of a neutral mindset as we taste the wine for the very first time. It is a little bit like when you're meeting people and someone for the very first time. That said, the first impression, as we know, is not always perfect. There might have been something that has influenced you while you were tasting, even unconsciously. So, if you don't like a wine or you really really love it at first and you're getting really really excited well i recommend always give it a second try with a bit of a calm mindset just to make sure of course all of these rules that i've been giving you are definitely not meant to make you feel uncomfortable while tasting wine or over complicating things at the end of the day i think simple courteous enjoyment and definitely sharing with others is what we are after while tasting wine and we should definitely feel relaxed and pleased while sipping but i hope this video will have given you just a few simple tips to make your tasting experience just a little bit better next time. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with the next one. Au revoir. Santé.